It was after 7 o'clock. And uh, I'll call the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting to, uh, to order. And with that, I'll ask for approval of minutes of the last meeting held May 8, 2006. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, how about calling the roll? <laughs> uh, I should call the roll before that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Verhassel? Here. Boren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta present? Davis? Here. Groff? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Lyonis? Here. Manning? Boston? Uh, excused. Okay. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Here. Susha? Here. Vanderwilling? Here. With that, I'll, will we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes? Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. M motion passed. Is there any objections with moving public input ahead? Does any alderman have any objections? Because then I will, I will move public input ahead. And I would ask that we have a limit of three minutes per person and that we speak to what's on the agenda. And same rules as council, that the public be respectful to the alderman and, and to the mayor and to the, to the uh, public. And then alderman, we are here to listen and we're not here to argue. And then when you come up to the mic, I would ask that you say your name and address. So anybody who would like to speak, uh, raise your hand, I'll acknowledge you, and then you can come, come to the mic. Go ahead, sir. Chris Palasi, 1125 Kentucky Avenue. Ready? A couple things that are concerned. Last week we had a, a, a wonderful council meeting. Um, and then all of a sudden things shifted at the end of the week. Uh, Chief Kirk had mentioned out of the lesser of two evils, uh, 23rd Street and City Hall would be, 23rd Street would be better, and everybody ran with it. Now we're kind of shoving this down the taxpayer's throat again without a lot of information towards everybody. We have a lot of new council people who haven't been here to get those informations. Now, from a math standpoint, and I'm not the greatest mathematician in the world, that's a lot of money over on 23rd Street. Maybe as a council we should remember that Mrs. Klein has said it the other day, you need information. You guys need to educate yourselves on these situations instead of trying to ram it down everybody's throat. Now, with that said, maybe giving back the government to the people is time for referendum. We have time. November, you want to break ground in April? Put five of the best sites on there. What has been studied? Let the people vote for that. Let the people decide what's best for them, not 16 people. That's all I need. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm Mary Zerfinitas, uh, 919 Wisconsin Avenue. I would like to say that the North 23rd Street site is the best possible site for the new police station. It's not the lesser of two evils. It's the more positive site compared to this current one at City Hall. If we put the police station at the current site, it's short-sighted. It's a short-term solution, and it will short-change the taxpayers. Now, I would like to say that the aldermen are informed. They have in their possession past negotiations for the North 23rd Street site. They have in their possession, uh, some of them do, um, Marilyn Montemayor, 
the uh, statistics, the financial facts on the parking lot on 7th and Penn Avenue. They have a history of the negotiations for the North 23rd Street site and all the financial facts attached to it. There is no big mystery here. We all had plenty of time to show our political activism and say our piece in the last two years. So this is not an option for us to be uh, political activists over this issue. It's a choice between two sites. Now you saw the police and the informational pickets. You saw the people who supported them. We are here to support Police Chief David Kirk and his force now. This is their time. This is their facility. We're not going to play any more political games with this issue. We're not going to stand on any street corners. And we must stop complaining. I am sick and tired of people being uninformed and thinking that we have to just keep going around in circles. Now this body politic, the Common Council, they're intelligent people. They have information at their disposal and now they have to make a decision between the inferior spot downtown. Now the community bank owns uh, from five to 10 feet of the current garage and to demolish this area would disrupt the surrounding businesses. It would disrupt city business, police business, et cetera, et cetera. So I say let's move to North 23rd Street. Let's be very mindful of the taxpayer dollars that go into it. An efficient facility with a wonderful big garage for sharing services can be built. And the soil problems can be rectified by building a basement. So it's not an impossible dream. But it is Chief David Kirk's dream. Excuse me, Mary. Your, to, your three minutes is up. OK. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to speak with you and the viewers at home. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to uh, speak? Go ahead. Bob Latree, 717 Dillingham Avenue, Sheboygan. Thank, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I guess uh, I've been watching this since 2004. The meetings with the county, between the city, they dropped out, started looking at Sheridan Park, looked at other places. We spent vicinity of what, $650,000 studying sites. Finally, they get to a vote and they pick Sheridan site. We have an election. The very first meeting after the election, Common Council rescinds that, overrides it, and uh, and we sit for a couple months. And I guess that's, that's your prerogative, your ele elected officials. In September, Alderman Davis brings up that we need a site, we've got to get going. So they vote. They come back over here, they vote. I think there was five, five sites on, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I am. It could be more or less. But the vote is 11 to 5 to build it right here. Now, my question is, what change from September of last year till right now? What changed? Less money? More money? A better deal? What changed? We've got intelligent people here that voted 11 to 5, and now we're going to override them again? Does that mean next month we do the same thing over again? That's ludicrous. And I'll never say this site was the best to build a police station. I did not. My personal opinion, they let it go and thought it was kind of a joke to let it go for a while. And now comes the 23rd Street Station, and there's a political payback going on. At the expense of the taxpayers of Sheboygan, and the county's going to reap the harvest. We talk about the 
They don't make land anymore. That's why they voted down Sheridan Park. What about the parking lot? That's land. They, you, they're not going to make that anymore either. That's land. It's our land. The county's going to have that pretty soon. And I don't buy that $122,000 what that's worth. It's worth a heck of a lot more. So I'm just asking you, at least have an open mind. And you can't just say either 23rd Street or nothing. You've got the information. Let's look at it. There's got to be a better site than here. But it isn't 23rd Street. So Excuse thank me. you, and I hope you vote your conscience. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak tonight? Go ahead. Gina Steinhardt, 1311 Maryland Avenue, Schwagen. Um, I was just looking through my notes from last year. Last September, we were at the same by, um, pass where we couldn't, nobody could make up their minds. We voted, or I w it was a committee of the whole meeting. There was a vote on City Hall and Vanderveer. It was 11 to 3 to keep those two sites in the picture. North 23rd Street voted 9 to 5 to have them get rid of it. Um, Jean Davis said it last year that we need to get this dead horse off the table. You know, it's true. It's just everybody keeps debating about North 23rd Street. The price of the lot itself since last year went up 200000 The price of the parking lot seems to keep going down every time I read it. It doesn't matter who's saying it. It's like... The press says it in one way, then it goes down lower and lower every time. I think there's got to be a definite number here, and there's some real questions about the number crunching. Plus, we have $5,000 a year that we're getting on rent in that parking lot. Why are we giving it up just to get a piece of land on North 23rd Street? This is city and county owned land anyway, and if you guys are so for shared services as if you know that's the more important thing than anything then the county can share that land with us. Why do we have to pay them? Now it's up to over 500000 for that land, plus a parking lot, plus move their salt shed. I mean, I give you, you all some um, reports that we did last year. Um, Mr. Sabinash must have thought the reports were pretty good or pretty accurate in some ways because he did use some of our figures for his last report. I'm not saying I'm any expert. Far from it. But if I can see the holes in these reports, and I can see the discrepancies, and I'm not paid to look at this or any kind of expert at any of this, I would think that you business people who are much better at this than me can see that there is not an apples to apples comparison here. It is way off. There's something wrong, and we shouldn't be rushing into making a decision when there's numbers that don't make sense. And this, all these numbers aren't going to mean anything to anybody right now. When they start making the police department there and start digging and find the contamination that one of the reports say is there, we're going to have a couple million dollars extra to clean it up. Who's going to be paying for it? Us taxpayers. I'm one that does not want to be paying for that. I say, well, let's go back to Vandervaart or go back to whatever site that is better. Chief Kirk only said North 23rd is better than City Hall. I know that he doesn't prefer that over Vandervaart. He's told me so. If you're really going by what the police say is the right thing, you know, get the rest of the story instead of just using one little piece that you pick out that you decide that's what you want to listen to because there's a lot more to this story and it's not being, it, everybody's not being honest. So please think about these things before you make your decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak tonight? Go ahead. Dawn Koch, 923 Dillingham Avenue. I, 
I think 23rd Street site is better than here. Anything is better than here. There just is no room down here at City Hall. Building here is kind of a short-term solution. We need something that's long-term. I don't understand the cost, how the cost went up 200000 from a year ago. I think that needs to be renegotiated. I understand part of the cost is replacing their salt shed. There's the shared services. Why can't they share our salt shed that we spilt down by the incinerator? That would eliminate some of the cost. I don't understand how the assessed value on that parking lot went down in a year. To me, this seems like a sweetheart deal for the county. I think 23rd Street site is definitely better than here, but the costs do need to be renegotiated. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir in the black, you wanted to speak? Uh, Tom Rathel, 1617 North 24th Street. Um, I didn't bring any notes or anything. I kind of wish I had now. But um, in sitting and listening to some of the people talk here, I really do find it kind of disturbing because I do really live in that neighborhood. And I'm just thinking as I look at all you people, I'm sure when you go home at night, uh, you do go to a relatively peaceful neighborhood. Uh, what is planning uh, in my area on 23rd Street is not going to be a peaceful neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> if the police department gets in there, uh, I have nothing against them, believe me. Uh, we need one, obviously. I just think that there's a better site than 23rd Street. <clears throat> but if you put the county in there too, uh, and then of course we're always talking about um, uh, municipal court, that doesn't run from 8 until 5. It runs practically any time of day or night. And so we have a disturbance with there. Uh, as far as the, the uh, traffic situation, I've yet to see anything done on a traffic study in that area. Superior Avenue is horrendous already. Uh, it's not a very uh, well-maintained street. So obviously, something is going to have to be done about that if the police department goes over there. Um, as far as location uh, for the police department, I think a terrible mistake was made on eliminating Sheridan Park. Half of that park would have been used for the police department and the other half would have been used as a park. Uh, for the number of people that I've seen in there since I started following this, uh, I would say you probably would only need about a nine by nine lot. There's hardly anybody that ever uses that park. And even after all that has been said about that park, um, still nobody goes there. Cost-wise, cost um, we have a problem with understanding exactly what that parking lot is worth downtown on 7th and Penn. Uh, I've heard anything from 122000 I think it costs the city I'm not really sure, but I'm, I'm sure it was well over half a million dollars to even get that land. We'd be losing revenue there for the parking meters. Uh, but at any rate, I think the value of that parking lot is probably more in the neighborhood of a million something, uh, not the 122,000 that we're hearing. So, and also the 23rd Street site, we've heard of contamination problems. I've yet to see anybody come up with figures on a proposal uh, for um, checking that out to see exactly what the city would be getting into if they did take that deal. So there's a lot of questions that are left, but my main concern is uh, having the police department put in uh, that particular area, obviously because of the traffic and the situation that it would bring. Sir, uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Sir, your three minutes are up. I figured that, so thank you very much. Thank you. Does anybody else want to speak tonight? Go ahead. Carl Rigotti, 919 Wisconsin Avenue.
Halat was said here tonight, I am 423, 23rd Street, because there is no room over here. There is no room at all. There's no room for parking right now, and it will, not, it will be last when the building is built. Another thing is, if we're thinking about going into these old, this old building here, it's going to cost you more money than if you build on 23rd Street. Because once you start uh, cutting off on, uh, on the old building, you're getting into a problem where the state's going to come in and say he wants this done, that done, and that done. It happened on the county. Uh, I, I just happened to be on, the, on that board when we re renewed the courthouse. We started out with a, about a million and a half dollars, and we wind up with about four and a quarter million dollars by the time we were done. Yes, I, and we're still having an old building. I think, I think uh, we got a good, good 16 aldermen here now that are thinking. I think they know what they're doing. And I just want to say, I think you should build on 23rd Street. And I'm sure that we can negotiate with the county uh, uh, for peddly things, you know. I, I don't think it's that much. And another thing is, I don't see why, why they have noise on 23rd Street. There's no houses. If you go up on Superior Avenue, there's maybe three houses there. Look at downtown here. What are they thinking? Look at all the buildings we got downtown here. They go down 9th Street. 10th Street, 7th Street, 6th Street, you're going to have a problem. I'm, I'm for uh, the uh, 23rd Street. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else who would like to speak tonight? Anybody else? Then we will move on with the agenda. We will go with, uh, which will now be item number four, RC number 526 by Building Use Committee submitting the Police Department building and City Hall space list summaries from Zimmerman Design Group. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would move that the RC be accepted and um, and adopted, and we begin discussions on the, on that. Second. Motion and a second. And um, with the discussion, I will ask uh, Mr. Sabinash to to uh, to give us his presentation. I thought that would be kind of hard to read, so I brought some handouts. So for people who are interested, if you could please pass these around. Uh, let's see. Um, we started on this project quite a while ago, and part of the premise of the project was to determine uh, how the project would fit on the, the first site that we took a look at, which was Sheridan Park. And then subsequently, based on some reevaluation of the premise of uh, what was being studied, we took a look at, as part of a separate site study, a series of five additional sites. At that time, um, through council action, we focused on the city hall site. And then subsequently, we understand there's an interest in revisiting the 23rd Street site. So today, um, as part of the evolution of the project, I thought we'd just get us up to speed in terms of how big the project was and what the projected or anticipated construction costs are going to be. So the handout that you have has some blue columns that are in the middle. That's really where the project stood back in 2005. There was a 2002 study that was initiated by, by uh, Kimmy and Steubenrock that had identified a project of about 68,000 square feet. There was a subsequent springtime of 2005 study that was initiated by 
Ingberg Anderson Moyer that's listed as the Moyer report at about 80,000 square feet and, and our work with the police department based on our experience and, and feedback from the police department had generated at that time an opinion that the project would be about 80,000 square feet. Uh, subsequent efforts to control costs and reduce the overall size of the project uh, led to an independent program of the City Hall and that has been completed to verify that the City Hall functions have consolidated within this existing facility would indeed fit within the facility and that's been validated. Subsequently, there was uh, an undercurrent of opinion that the police department was not as small as it could be while delivering the most services for the least construction dollars and therefore there was some consideration given to how big the uh, police department project could be. That generated as part of the review of the committee a project of about 68,000, little uh, greater than 68,000. Um, but as part of the consideration for City Hall site, there was the opportunity to have some additional services located within the existing or the proposed police department building to provide toilet facilities and the like for this building, which would be cost prohibitive to provide as remodeled space. We're more efficient and more effective at spending money on new toilet <coughs> room and elevatoring than we would be at, at allocating that money within the existing facility. So where we sort of stand today is a police department building that if it were located on the city hall site in terms of the green area on the sheet of about 73,000 square feet. And if we were looking at alternative sites, namely a 23rd Street site or any other site for that matter that would let us to, uh, would, would allow us to do slab on grade construction, something in the order of 71,000 square feet. If somebody said, can you, can you make it under 70? I'm, I'm sure that as part of the programming process and the design process, we likely would find those economies of scale. But in terms of the overall size, looking at something in the order of 70,000 square feet. And in terms of the overall usable area of the building, when we're talking about how big a building is, there's net square footage and there's gross square footage. On the very right margin, a 55,000 square foot net building. Uh, generally speaking, um, most of the spaces allocated within the proposed building are uh, building service functions for the police department, but there are also some vehicle service functions. And those are enumerated and broken out separately. So there are what we refer to as large spaces and building spaces to determine the ultimate size of the project. Does anybody have any questions about the proposed size? Um, hearing none, we will go into we would currently see the project budget falling. And, and I think this is a sheet that most of you will have seen if you've had the opportunity, thank you, to um, have been party to the project uh, um, to this date. And for those who are not, I'll, I'll just go through it fairly quickly. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to project studies from 2002 as well as comparable building types into a 2007-2008 economic time frame. And to do that, uh, we use comparable buildings, buildings that have been recently bid, as well as comparison data. Our means data is average cost of buildings like this that are representative of the quality of the project that we expect to have. And we use that to determine a cost per square foot. That cost per square foot then becomes in, in some ways the basis for how big the project will be and what it'll ultimately cost. And so as part of that consideration, we had offered up two what we, we, we believe to be comparable facilities. Uh, one a project in Janesville and one a project in Oak Creek. And what we saw as part of that discovery effort was that we would expect to potentially see cost per square foot on the order of 160 to 180 dollars per square foot. Um, this is uh, projected $2,006, so I, I looked at where we are in terms of the construction schedule and said, boy, it'd be really hard not to get into 2007. And then as we're all familiar with our own budgets, uh, inflation has been a bit of a problem, especially in the construction industry where um, construction products have tended to become commodity driven and within a world market have, have seen some fairly heady exp uh, uh, and exponential increase in costs. So as I, I look at where we would tend to be now and, and based on some of the information that we had looked at with, uh, with the committee, we saw 160 to 180, I called the 160 I think uh, an optimistic number and the 180 a conservative number. 
Uh, but we would recommend that if we're now at the tail end of 2006, early 2007, we really focus on that $180 a square foot number. And that will have some changes uh, that will be identified as part of greater detail. Uh, but that was, I, I think, an appropriate cost given what we've seen in our market as well as the anticipated market that we'd see in the Sheboygan area as a whole. And then secondarily, there was an additional consideration of what would happen in the City Hall building. And so we again took that optimistic and conservative approach. And seeing as we're probably into 2007, we'd probably tend to want to be a little more conservative than optimistic given what's uh, again transpired in the construction market. And so we would be advocates of using the more expensive costs to budget the project at this time. I have another sheet that identifies how we would generate the construction cost off of work not just using the unit costs. And so as part of that basis, and again, as point of reference, where we were in 2005, inflating to $2,006. Uh, where we think we were in the beginning of this year and where we think we're forecasting toward at the toward the end of this year. And um, two things that are worthy of note. One is the building got smaller. So where we were at about 80,000 square feet, now we're down to in the, somewhere in the low 70s, if not under 70,000 square feet. That as we looked at where we were in terms of the optimistic and conservative approach, if we looked at a 23rd Street site as a hypothetical metering effort of uh, comparing the two, uh, we would tend to say that we would, again, tend to take in that purple column the more, um, the more conservative approach. Um, it's been a very difficult market to predict. And we hate to go into a project. We'd rather turn money back over into the project to um, go back into a budget, go back into tax relief rather than looking for additional funds later on. So we, we prefer the conservative approach. We had identified specific building components, be they fleet or actual building construction, and we looked to optimize and reduce the cost of certain categories. And so what we begin to find is a more blended approach that identifies some of the specific characteristics that we would see as part of the building and uh, does so in a way that uh, tends to reduce the overall cost per square foot. So um, looking at sort of where we were in 2005, optimistic and conservative, somewhere around $145 to about $165, we think that the cost per square foot of a project on a relatively flat site represented by 23rd Street would be about $150 a square foot. That's optimistically better than where we were in terms of the 180, 160. I think that's partially driven by the opportunity to have a simpler uh, parking structure associated with the project, more economical parking structure than we might see elsewhere. And it compares generally favorably with other opinions of construction costs. We saw the Sheridan, Pike, uh, the Sheridan Park site priced out by uh, Engberg Anderson Moyer at $195 and the 23rd at about 162 we saw the Kimmy report uh, identifying a 2004 construction value of about $130 a square foot that when inflated to 2006, 2007 is about $147 a square foot. So we feel as though, even though we've operated somewhat autonomously of our peers, our peers are looking at the same data that we have and they've come up with uh, a pretty close approximation that lends us to uh, have credence that what we have is a realistic budget for uh, the project magnitude that we've identified as well as um, a realistic budget to go ahead with. And then secondarily, at the very bottom of the sheet, we had identified magnitude of project for City Hall. And always acknowledging that the City Hall was intended to fit within a budget, it's, uh, it's something that we would address as the design of City Hall were to proceed. Right now, hypothetically, if the project uh, for City Hall was to be delayed, we sort of divorced those in our budgeting. So we said, well, well, what happens if they go independently rather than consolidated? And so that drove the very last sheet. which attempts to take a look at basically the overall project cost, aside from construction, uh, that one might expect to see on a project of this magnitude. 
And so when we're considering construction cost, we also have to consider everything else that goes into acquiring a project, including furniture, including land acquisition, and other issues related to uh, how we get from point A to point B. Um, what it does tend to identify as a project of this magnitude is substantial and worthy of continued debate. Um, that we think we would probably see some economy of scale in combining the two projects, but knowing that budgets are real and, and realistic and problems for everyone, that the opportunity would be to divorce the two projects if necessary. That the cost, if we did so, would be in the order of $1.3 million, hypothetically, to divorce those and run the City Hall project out into a 2008-2009 bid frame. Um, and that a police department project on not necessarily 23rd Street, uh, but any flat site that's not an urban site would probably have some construction value that would be returned to the taxpayers in terms of a, a reduced size of project construction budget. It's not a substantial number, but it is, uh, it is still a more economical uh, construction typology, largely because we don't have to deal with elevators and stairs and things of that nature. Lastly, if we're to consider where we are now and where we would like to go in terms of timelines. Thank you. And, and I apologize, this one might be a little hard to read. Oops. But where we were in the spring of this year was we we're expecting to start on a design process in April and May of this time frame. Clearly, we haven't done that. A 23rd or other site and a city hall site, I think, would run um, simultaneously. Uh, there would be very little uh, impact in terms of delivery, regardless of the site, so long as the site were available. Where we really start to see potential impacts on the schedule is, depending on what would happen with the city hall site, um, issues related to how the construction is sequenced, um, timing that the contractor can get access to the site, start to extend the construction schedule. And that's why you start to see increases in, con in construction costs as the project continues out into subsequent years, 2008, 2009. So we would generally say that the 23rd Street site, if it were available, or any other site that's readily available, would generally get you the project quicker. Um, by getting, it, you, getting you into the project quicker, uh, you're probably going to save money in the long run, even if it's not directly enumerated. So I think any site that's readily accessible is a valuable site in that regard. Um, but in terms of this time frame, we'd be probably looking at a spring of 2007 bid phase. Um, if you elected to divorce the PD site and the City Hall site, we could potentially gear up to achieve both at the same time. Um, but what you'd probably see is you'd lose sort of that macro economy of scale that you had when both projects were located on this site. I, I think if you move off this site with the PD, you're probably also going to lose some of those macro kind of scales that you'll look at redundant job trailers, redundant project managers, and field supervision that uh, uh, would be probably ideal given the two projects being proximate to one another. And uh, But that may not be an important issue to you. So. Um, uh, I guess in, in terms of recap, we'd be looking at a spring of 2007 start. Um, inflation worries everybody, including myself. It's a uh, very difficult market to predict. We've seen that volatility uh, present uh, for quite some time now over the past year and a half or so at least. And so I would tend to say that if it's possible, the quicker you can move, the better off you are. But given the magnitude of the decision that has to be made, that, that has to be weighed as well. We don't want to do something harsh uh, without uh, considering the importance of the decision. So um, that's currently where uh, I think the timeline is, I think the budget is, and I, I think the magnitude of the project is. Does the alderman have any questions for Mr. Sabinash? Alderman Montemayor. Um, thank you, Alderman Vanderwell. Um, thank you, Mr. Sabinash. Um, I understood what you were saying, so uh, thank you again. I'm glad you're doing all this good work. Certainly glad you know exactly what you're doing. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. The hard stuff. 
And you well, other alderman have and, and I guess maybe just in, this is the hardest part for any community. What you're going through right now is the most difficult part of the decision. It's where it goes and how much it's gonna cost. Those are very, very, very trying decisions and you're not alone in going through the efforts that you're going through. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just so I'm crystal clear on this, and also for the people at home, then for the police department, if we do this in 2007, you're estimating then that it's going to be $151 per square foot? Yes. And then uh, the city hall, the city hall component would be 97.62 per square foot? Yes, but uh, acknowledging that the city hall funding might be different, there's always an opportunity to work back. I would tend to say that what would probably happen is you'd end up with a bigger laundry list and you'd pick and prioritize a little bit more. If you said that financing was fixed, it was a hard cap, then you'd, you'd go through a more strenuous process of prioritizing. Okay. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up, I, I, had, the, uh, I had a tour of the uh, new fire department over on South 18th Street and I was, uh, I was impressed with it and the thing that kind of impressed me that uh, it looked like it's a very functional building but it looked like, for example, when they were doing counters they used Formica, they used a lot of carpeting where carpeting was appropriate. And I guess my question is, when we're talking about furnishing, I, I guess that would fall under furnishings or finishings of the building. Uh, I would like to, it, maybe it's already been taken under consideration, but I guess you can get sick of uh, a color of Formica three times for what it would cost you to put in Corian or marble to begin with. And the same thing could be said for, for carpeting rather than putting in a, a fancier floor. So I hope those economies are taken into consideration. Not that I want to nickel and dime the, 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 the police department, but I think those are very important considerations. Um, I guess that's all for right now. Maybe if you'd like to comment on that. Uh, the cost per square foot that's generated is, uh, again, it's comparable to what other communities have done. I, I would tend to say that uh, most of the communities in Wisconsin, uh, I mean, I go back to the cost per square foot relative to the means data. We're below the 50 percentile in the national average as a comparison in, in our budget currently. So uh, acknowledging that they do some things in California that, that cost a little more and uh, the coasts tend to cost more. Um, I, I think we put together a budget that is representative. It identifies commercial grade products largely, um, but does so in a way that uh, this is not an opulent cost per square foot building that we've established here. Follow up. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. One follow up. Uh, the uh, getting back to uh, uh, in, in other cities where they built police departments like for furnishers and fixtures, uh, I realize some of the stuff probably in the police department is old, but some of it also has a lot of character. Mm -hmm. uh, is it traditional that when, when, a, when a city builds a police department that they kind of do an inventory of existing furniture, what, what could be used again in the new facility rather than buying all new furniture? And again, I'm not trying to nickel and dime the project, but if some of the stuff is still functional, let's say, for example, a conference room table, rather than buying a new one, carry it over to the, to the, new, to the new police department. What's usually done in that regard? Uh, almost everybody has to take something with them. It, it's usually, most of the time, budgets. And, and furniture is, a, is an extraordinarily good example of the array of costs. You can spend $10,000 on a desk or $150. And, um, Cost in furniture tends to have wide ranges in it. Again, I would tend to say that what we've done is we've used, uh, again, our comparables. So people that have done things, um, that's the way we established the budget. And everybody that we compared it to usually brought some stuff over. And it may not even be things that are, are simply serviceable because of character or other requirements. There may be some things that the police department currently has in terms of uh, storage systems and the like that there is no replacement for. So when we get into card systems and fingerprint filing systems and things of that nature, uh, sometimes we have to take over what's there because we can't replicate. And so that might just be something that gets painted. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
I'm very glad that you put all these numbers together for us. I guess I'm just having some trouble following uh, some of the, the sheets. And one in particular is, uh, is this one here. And um, I'm wondering if you could just walk us through, I believe, the option A and option B is the optimistic conservative. On the previous sheets, the green represented City Hall and the purple was 23rd Street. Did you flip-flop the colors on this no. sheet? No. Uh, option A and option B were some of the earlier efforts. And, and what we're trying to do when we do something like this is give you an accurate gauge of where we started and where we've gone to. Uh, the green on here is the information that was presented to the committee back in uh, April of this year. And then the purple is effectively what we had anticipated for the cost of new police department facility off-site. If, if uh, City Hall was maintained, then you'd be looking at the green column. If police department moved elsewhere onto a relatively flat site, 23rd or other, then we'd be looking at the purple column. And the very far right purple column is what I said, City Hall dissociated. If you don't do the projects at the same time, what happens to the city hall costs relative to the macro of having a major construction project proximate to this building? And what happens is that if you build next to this building with city hall, you get the advantage of having that big project with one contractor. And the far right column is if we bid city hall out later, what happens to that cost? So if you said, that's too rich for my blood to do city hall, I'm gonna do a police department on a relatively flat site like 23rd or something else. We'd be looking at that construction value of 10.734, which I think is identical to the previous sheets we've seen for construction cost. And then what we're just testing is what happens to the City Hall project, again, if they happen at a different time or if the site becomes uh, a site that uh, has more than one project on it versus uh, something that doesn't. Does that answer your question? To a certain extent, I guess I'm in the slow group tonight. Um, bottom line, if we build a police station behind City Hall, what would that be versus if we build it at 23rd Street? And when you give us the price at 23rd Street, does that also include the acquisition? acquisition uh, building acquisition on all of these is zero. So whatever building acquisition is needs to be identified as part of the budget. So for all of these, depending on how the site is configured, what site it is, you know, a four acre site somewhere else might not be the order of magnitude of what we're talking about. So it's zero, it has to be alloc allocated into the budget. And if the budget is finite, then other categories of the budget have to be adjusted accordingly. Um, where we are in terms of the project for the police department is if we're gonna take the less optimistic, it's about $10.1 million on this site and about 10.7 million on, on 73rd, or 23rd, excuse me. But part of that is driven by square footage. I, I need to identify that with the 23rd Street site and the City Hall site are evolving. So we view them as fairly comparable construction cost sites. There was no $3 million home run by moving to 23rd Street or something like that. We view them again as fairly comparable in construction cost. Alderman Clavonis. Sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Um, can I just ask on the page that you have Danesville Police mm -hmm. Department and Oak Creek Police Department, um, the size of their buildings, uh, Janesville is quite a bit smaller. Um, you're using to compare those, uh, is a police force smaller there than our police force or do they share services with a county or how come they They have a really with, small building. They have, they have a really small building. They have 30,500 square feet. Right. And they have some garage space that's maintained across the street, but largely, um, uh, and, and there are other functions that aren't present within Janesville project too. Okay, so so it's, it's a smaller project because it's a smaller building and that was a mandate of the uh, city council. Okay. Uh, generally, but I would generally say that the biggest program differentiator between yours and theirs are things like vehicle maintenance, the size of the garage, and other factors that Janesville simply doesn't have. They don't have vehicle maintenance, but we have vehicle maintenance currently in our program. Okay, so that's, that takes up a lot of space, vehicle maintenance. Uh, it all adds up. Yeah, and storing of vehicles as well. It, it, our garage is substantially larger than Janesville's, correct. Okay, and the Oak Creek, um, same, same differences? Uh, uh, some similarities, some differences, smaller agency. 
about half the size in the terms of population course. base, so we okay. have a smaller agency. Okay. Uh, what we liked about it as a comparison, it's a single story slab on grade. Janesville is a multi-story building, so it gives us a, a gauge for what slab on grade construction is costing relative to multi-story. Um, but generally speaking, um, a different agency, a smaller agency, has a courtroom, has a range. Hill Creek. Yep. Okay. So some features there are, again, replicated here and some are not. Communications. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do any other aldermen have any questions or comments? Alderman Verhassel. Thank you. You did a very good job laying out a lot of the hard numbers. I do have some questions, I guess, on some, I guess I'd call them intangibles, and that being safety and workplace efficiency. Com could you compare the two sites, perhaps? I think there was some discussion a year and three months ago when this was being compared, mm -hmm. and they talked about being a little safer, not having prisoners going up and down elevators, up and down stairs, mm -hmm. and being more workplace efficient because everybody's on one level. Could you maybe speak to that? Um. Let, let, let's start with the safety of persons in custody. Uh, at the time that there was a whole lot of discussion going about uh, relative to our peers, um, there was a substantial amount of discussion about how the building design in a multi-level scenario would work in that regard. And we don't, we fundamentally don't have any problem thinking that a multi-story building is a foregone conclusion that it's a failure. I, I think certain sites are better for that scenario, but we had never been proponents of having the lockup at a different level than the majority of the building. The things that we were looking at putting at another level were parking evidence and other features that are generally infrequently accessed by most of the officers on duty. So in terms of multiple levels, I think that there is probably a good, solid, uh, efficient scenario that can be realized in a multiple level scheme. You're not really of the size where you, know, you get to the point where in, when you're at about 120,000 square feet, when you go to multiple levels, you actually have efficiencies, but there's a perception of efficiency that's tied into elevating and stairs that I can actually show you. You probably walk farther slab on grade at 120,000 square feet than you do if you walked up and down a stair, but the perception is that you're less efficient. Um, I, I think the thing that probably drives me closest to saying any scenario other than a multi-story is simply the cost of construction, that it gives us more opportunity to control that. It's generally a, a more, uh, more efficient, more economical way of building. And therefore, whenever we have the opportunity to do that, it, it tends to have an end result that's more economical. Uh, I can't say that unilaterally every building design is different, but um, uh, if you had 40 acres out and back here, that would be wonderful. That's just not the physical reality of what we have to deal with on this site. So we would be looking at multiple stories. Um, a 23rd Street site, if I remember, we haven't done, we have not done any significant consideration of that site, but it, it's not a huge site either. I mean, it's bigger than what we have here. Uh, but if I remember correctly, there were some concerns about uh, uh, the overall size of that project relating to stormwater and other features that would have to be incorporated there. So, but it's a, uh, it's a probably a site that gives us uh, a lot of design latitude. Um, and it is certainly, uh, I, I certainly have an affinity for slab on grade these days because of the nature of the cost of construction. If I start going up, it starts to cost more. Did that? Yes, thanks. Uh, President Berg. Uh, yes, sir. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, parking is certainly a consideration. I didn't see parking uh, particularly factored into your equation here. I think earlier studies have suggested uh, need for uh, spaces in excess of 100 parking spaces uh, to serve municipal court, et cetera. Uh, could you, uh, uh, and again, parking may not be part of the per se building construction, but it's part of the larger campus and footprint. Could you please address parking here versus at uh, 23rd Street? Uh, well, when we did the site analysis, we had identified that additional properties would have to be acquired. Uh, we tend to believe that the, uh, I know there's been some continued discussion about the nature of and the need for police department parking 
uh, in a secure environment, meaning associated with a building enclosed in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we actually favor this site in that regard because I think we can get fairly economical parking of a fairly stout type underneath the building. Uh, and that would generally accommodate most of the police department parking needs. What it doesn't account for is the offset. And, and I think we had identified, I want to say it was like a million and a half dollars that we might have to spend to acquire additional parcels and recreate parking that was part of the consideration for this site relative to the others. But I'd, I'd ask you to maybe take a look at the report. I don't, I don't have that with me. But we would acknowledge that the site costs are very unique. And if you had an affinity for one site versus another, we maybe just take a hard look at what those uh, other project costs are that are going to be realistic and, and part of the budget and deal with them now. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just going back to the numbers, it looks like you're saying if we go to um, 23rd Street, we'd be looking at maybe $10.7 million plus 500000 for the acquisition costs, so that brings us up to $11.2 million. And I know that as aldermen, we don't have a lot of interaction with you, and I just want to make it clear that on behalf of my constituents, $11.2 million is way too high. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware that the county has recently repaired their shooting range, um, and I don't think that we would need to put in a shooting range in the new building. Um, the Shared Service Committee is going to start meeting real soon, and I think before we break ground, we really need to hammer out exactly what the county's going to do for the city and what the city's going to do for the county. Um, we've got to get this cost down. Just this past week, um, all the citizens of Sheboygan received new tax assessments. My phone's been ringing off the hook. My emails have uh, been clogging up the system, I think. Um, the taxes here are too high. Um, people are complaining to me anywhere from $200 increase to $4,000 increase a year. We've got to do something to bring it down. I think everybody agrees we need to build a new police station. But on behalf of my constituents, I need to convey very strongly to you, this price is way too high. So please keep that in mind. It would be nice the next time you come in if you gave us a pie in the sky and ultra conservative, give us the generic rundown of what we could get at the least amount of money to the taxpayers because it would be, I think, beneficial to see both ends of the spectrum. Thank you. Alderman Rehassel. Thank you. I just need a little more help. I'm following up on Alderman Clayhunas' question regarding the comparison between Janesville and Sheboygan. Having lived in that area, I believe Janesville is about 30% bigger than Sheboygan population-wise. It's about 65 to 70,000. What I know, can I assume the police department? It's, it's about. It's it's in the 60s. Yes. Can I assume the police department staffing is proportionally bigger than as well? Would that be a fair assumption? I don't remember what their command staff uh, is uh, allocated at, but uh, I, I would view them as pretty comparable in terms okay. of allocation. And that, I guess that wasn't my question as much as, I believe Janesville is 30,500 square feet. Are your numbers yes, at? correct. Okay, and you're, you're planning 70,000 for Sheboygan, correct? Correct. Okay, so is the vehicle maintenance the lion's share of that difference, 40,000 square feet? No, or? it's also building and other program functions. Okay. There, are other, there are other overriding categories in there that it's not just vehicle maintenance. There are other larger allocations of space in this project than there were at Janesville. Could you point out the big ones just for my own? I can give you the information. I can't, I can't do it at the top of my, off the top of my head. Okay. But like, we have communications allocated here. Janesville does not. We have a more substantial booking process than Janesville has allocated. We have more uh, substantial evidentiary storage than Janesville has. Uh, bigger garage, um, vehicle maintenance. Those are the things that come to the top of my head. But Janesville did what they did. That doesn't necessarily mean that it satisfied everybody's needs. It's what they built. And you may find yourselves in the same position. Um, ultimately, you have to build what you can afford. Um, I, I would have a harder time as we get. I mean, we already cut about 10,000 square feet out of the project from where we thought it needed to be to satisfy the program goal, which was something out in the future. The more you cut, the more you dig into that, that goal. And so it's not as though people haven't done it. That doesn't mean that if you can avoid doing it, you don't try to avoid doing it. I mean, space is finite, and if you build it, you have it. If you don't, you don't. It's like the fourth bedroom you want to have when you have the two kids, right? It's, Want to get them each in their own bedroom? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. They, they cut it back to whatever they thought they needed it to be to fulfill their budget goal. Thank you. Alderman Groff. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, looking at your, your proposed project schedule, you're calling for sometime in June to um, sign off on, on the program for the police department? Is that correct? It looked like it was the beginning of June. Now, is yeah, that- Yeah, we've, we've done some work to get it to smaller, a smaller scale. And I, I think we would be, in, if the, in the perfect world, if you said today, boy, let's just get going. We'd be working mostly in the month of June to validate that the program was correct. That is as big as it needs to be or as small as it needs to be. And we would be getting geared up, getting our consultants back online and getting schedules aligned to start in July. To July. To start construction in July? No, 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 oh. design. Design, okay. What is your drop dead date for where we want to build this station if we want to maintain a January or very early spring construction or I know where you're going. Um, some things in the schedule and maybe some just some uh, I guess follow up on maybe some of the architectural nomenclature that if you haven't been part of the building committee or if, if you haven't uh, heard us talk about what would happen in the project, I'll, I'll just try to identify it as quickly as I can and, and as succinctly as I can. Uh, when we refer to schematic design, we're talking about putting pieces in place on paper that can be adjusted really rapidly and will impact how things relate to one another. And that's really that first bar that you see. It's the part where things are ex exceptionally fluid. And I had basically two months in for schematic design. That's August and September. I don't think you can cut that much. Uh, we've done some work to date, but you know, putting the things in place where we can adapt them takes time, it takes effort, and it takes feedback. We had two months following in October and November for design development. That's the time when the engineers come in and they tell us what we can and we can't do. They will define how big the generator needs to be, what kind of air uh, and quantity of air changes happen within the building, whether we have a boiler system or not, how big the uh, stormwater management feature needs to be, how big the pipe is that ties the building together into a, a main system. And that took us basically through the end of November. Now November and December is kind of a, it's a fluid month. It's hard to get meetings, people are in, people are out, a lot of vacation. So it's sort of a time when things are, it's a good time to stop, think, collect your thoughts and then move ahead. And then we had, basically we we're saying four months, but realistically January, February, March for construction documents. That's the time where we put together the big project manual and the big roll of drawings. Um, you don't want to cut short that time. That's the time when things that need to be considered are considered fully by the people who are working on the project. They're documenting it so that the contractor has a, uh, a clear understanding of the scope of work. So that took us to March. If you said, I don't know, can I go to August? Yeah. If I knew to start up in August and I can get my guys geared up to start in August, it doesn't have any impact on the schedule. That's why I had that startup and PD program time frame at the beginning. But it really starts to probably have an impact the further out you go. I, I think past that you start to move further and further into the springtime. And if you remember where we were initially, we were saying, well, it'd be really nice to get out in December where we get that, um, get that opportunity to have contractors fill in their workload. You're not out of that window in March. They're going to be aware of that project. They're going to be aware of the magnitude of the project. But I don't really want to go April, May. I'd like to try to get that thing going in the ground and getting started up in, in March, April, so that uh, when we start digging a hole, we're digging it in a good time in the spring. We can get enclosure and finish the project up ideally in a year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other aldermen have any questions? Uh, President Burke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think um, one of the things that it's difficult to comprehend is a bottom line cost for all the sites. Uh, and I think that's certainly, I think I, we can see clearly what construction costs are for the two sites. But we have acquisition costs, we have uh, costs of uh, uh, parking, et cetera, and also the possibility, I guess, of expansion. So uh, I guess I would be interested perhaps uh, from staff, uh, and uh, I believe Mayor, you had been also involved in some negotiations with the, the county, is when might we be 
uh, able to expect the side-by-side -side cost of both sites, factoring in if all the hard and soft costs, including acquisition, parking, etc. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody in specific you would like to speak? Uh, perhaps uh, uh, Mr. Gebhardt, if uh, given your financial uh, person, have you got any thoughts on just a process, how long it would take to pull really a cost figure together, given we have a basis to start in terms of the construction part? Also, operational costs, if you would, because there will be a difference between the two sites. Boy, operational is going to be hard to figure. <laughs> but in, in terms of the, um, I guess if one was to think about a methodology, if you knew what 23rd Street site cost, you could actually plug it into the matrix and it would, it would have a present value. If you knew what other sites cost, let's we'll limit ourselves to 23rd, if you knew what other sites cost, you could also plug that in in terms of land acquisition. I mean, most of the other project costs have been enumerated. There are actually, I think, nine or 10 pages of a checklist that we use to verify that we haven't missed anything and that uh, expectations for project overall magnitude have been met. One thing we really don't know because we really don't have a site is what those sites are. But if you, So if you were looking at one or two sites, it really wouldn't be too difficult to plug a value in and then work back from there to validate whether a budget adjustment needed to be made somewhere else. I, operationally, that's going to be a tough one. You know, I'll have to be uh, dependent on Mr. Savanash, I think, in a, a lot of those cost figures as far as the different sites and, and how to put those together. And I think uh, we'll be trying, you know, for his guidance as we go through the process with our committees, capital improvements, and, and through the whole process. Uh, you know, from my standpoint, um, you know, I guess I, obviously the operational costs are very important. We'll need to, to know that. This, uh, I guess we have to look at the timeline when, when the building is open, uh, whether or not we need to have additional janitors and so forth for the building. Um, but uh, I guess initially here, obviously, we're looking at the total financing cost and what impact that's going to have on uh, our interest expense in the 2007 budget and uh, what we'll be looking at, uh, especially as we approach this with declining revenues for 2007 and what impact that's going to have on operations. And as I think it's going to be at a future meeting, but probably too much in depth for this meeting. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, as far as the detail, one side against another, uh, I guess I really have to turn to Mr. Savanash to guide us on, on that difference on, on that. Obviously, the acquisition, uh, we'll have to work with the county on the 23rd, 23rd Street site um, for that. Obviously, if you can keep it to a couple sites, the answer is a lot easier. The, the more complex the sites become, the more difficult it is to make an assessment. So if you were, as an example, looking at this site and any other site, uh, we could probably come up with a, uh, a rationale working with staff that would have the, uh, the project cost uh, enumerating all of those variables fairly quickly. Just a, a follow-up question. Um, the, you say the site cost is known here, yet uh, an earlier parking study noted that between 2.30 and 3.30 p.m., total staff POVs, which would be the shift change time, would be 73 vehicles. Uh, would you say that the city hall site with the build out and I guess just your knowledge of the density in, in downtown Sheboygan, uh, just any observation you might have on parking and it would, be, would it be reasonable as part of the city hall construction to begin to acquire either through routine ways or through condemnation uh, the extra parking space for not only the, uh, the, uh, the staff, but also the visitors that we could expect. And I believe that uh, uh, they had accorded about 22 sites for visitor in the study that I have, mm -hmm. which was, uh, I believe that was the original Steubenrock study. Mm -hmm. uh, parking that's acquired that's already parking is generally fairly economical. Parking that's acquired that is something else currently like everybody knows, if it's a building, it's very costly to take it down and then make it into a parking space. Uh, so if um, 
the methodology was in place and parking was available that was readily available as parking, I think you'd find that the costs would become more manageable. The more sites that we take a look at that are largely something else now, you're going to see those costs escalate. And you know, it's simple math. If you have a flat site somewhere that has nothing on it, it's easy to build parking. If you have a site somewhere that has something on it, costs go up. Is there any other questions for Mr. Sabinash? Then I thank you for the presentation. Um, moving on under discussion, uh, moving on with discussion uh, regarding the alternate site for location of the police department in North 23rd Street or Alderman Groff. Give a motion on the floor, I believe, that we have to vote on. And that was that the um, RC be accepted and filed. All right. We will, we will vote on that motion in a second. Alderman Serta had something to say. And we can't find her mic, so. Just for clarity purposes, and I don't, I, I don't know if it's relevant at this time, um, in order to accept it and adopt this, we are actually, with some reason, we're just accepting the information which was given to us, correct? Okay. The information that was sent to you from uh, Building Use Committee, which was the, the original um, document, um, I think there were two documents attached to the um, to that RC itself. It was everything that building use had up to that point. Because one of the um, the building use committee wanted to make sure that the rest of the council had all the information that the building use had discussed up to that point in time. So that's why we sent this to the committee of the whole. When we sent it to the council, we sent it to the committee of the whole. So. Well, I have, I have uh, document 2583. Do you have another document? I, I was that all included? It was a, a thicker booklet that was photo. Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion on the floor to, to file and a second to accept the information, to accept and adopt the information. Okay. Do we need a roll call vote? We'll, we'll just go with the majority. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Okay, then we'll move on the agenda with a discussion regarding alternate site for location of the police department, uh, specifically North 23rd Street. Um, Mayor Perez, did you have something to say about that? I could. Could you please? And this is the discussion, thank you Mr. Chairman, this, the discussion regarding the, the <coughs> uh, <coughs> proposed uh, consideration for the 23rd location. Okay. If I may, thank you. Uh, Chief Kirk and I met uh, in my office mm -hmm. uh, briefly on some other matters and the discussion just sort of popped up uh, about the new police station uh, that we're building and we this has not been the first time we that the discussion pops up because we talk about it quite a lot we want to make sure that uh, our timeline is, is, is kept in place but somewhere the, the thought just rose is now that we're really moving forward, the timeline is really on, 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 on track. Uh, is the current location the best location or is there a better location? Uh, and it just turned out that Chief Kirk and I both agreed that given this choice and the 23rd location, which at one point I believe this, this location and 23rd were the first and second choices, that given those two choices, that perhaps the 23rd location would be better than here. As you know, I was always in favor of the 23rd location. 
I, I told uh, Chief Kirk that I would not move in that direction because I, I am not for opening a full-blown search for another police site. Uh, that process has been lengthy, has been very contentious. It's divided the community every time we look at it. And I, didn't, I simply didn't want to go there anymore. The council, albeit maybe not this council, but the council has already made a decision. And that decision is the police station is going to be built on the north side of the building. And that, yeah, that's north, that was a little track here. On the north side of the building. I'm perfectly content with that because we need to provide our police officers with the facility that they need to do their job uh, and, and do it uh, in a way that is professional and very accommodating to them. But again, the issue was, is the 23rd a better location than this? And both Chief Kirk and I, and I think I can say this, that we both agreed that given those two choices, the 23rd site would be better so long as, so long as the timetable was not disrupted. So long as we don't throw, keep throwing things in there that's going to delay this thing and derail the whole process and start all, start all the contention all over again and the divisiveness of the community. And that's where we were then. Uh, we met briefly with the Adam Payne, Mr. Adam Payne uh, from the county, the county administrator, and Chairman Bill Guerin from the County Board of Supervisors, and just simply asked, is there a possibility to uh, reconsider 23rd Street. And the response, uh, the meeting did not take long, uh, it was quite brief. The response was, sure, make us an offer. At that point, the Building Use Committee met, discussed it. Uh, there was a motion made, and I believe that's what you're gonna discuss now, and uh, that's what's before you. But again, I think it's very important that, uh, you know, that there's been a lot of talk, about, when something like this happens, it's very understandable for people to get excited, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. But it's, very, it's perfectly normal and healthy to get excited about this. I got excited because it opened up a new opportunity to perhaps build on the flatter side, provide more opportunity for shared services while at the same time balancing that with the people's pleas for, for less taxes and how, how do we go about balancing their needs and, and providing more shared services. I thought it was a great, a great way to be responsive to the community and say, we're gonna build at a better site that will give you a better bang for your buck. So that's, that's where, where we're at now, and I, for one, I, I'll make it perfectly clear again, I do not want the whole process to be derailed. We're gonna build a police station. We're going to build a new police station, and it will be built in 07. We will break ground in 07, and I hope, I say that, hoping that I have the support of the Common Council and that I have the support of the, 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 the city uh, officials. So that's where we're at now, and the building news met, and they've got a resolution, they've made a motion, and that's where we're at now. I don't know if Chief Kirk would like to add anything to it. Thank you, go ahead, Chief. I would have to uh, say pretty much uh, what the mayor has, has stated here is, is absolutely accurate. Uh, we did meet. Um, we talked about the, the size of the, the police department uh, site. I have been concerned about the, the size of this site. Uh, we've talked about this. As we looked at the two options, 23rd Street is the better option. I have not received one negative comment from my employees on this move. In fact, during the time from September until just recently, I've had numerous conversations with our employees about the City Hall site. They were concerned, I was concerned. Um, but we wished, uh, I can recall how the conversation began because as we had our discussion on Act 40, I've said, Mary, you have uh, spoke repeatedly that this timeline is firm. If you can recall, I spoke uh, to the media saying that I'm not sure if the timeline will be kept. If you, in fact, are looking at 40, I can't believe the timeline would, 
remain a firm um, at that conversation or discussion with the mayor. He indicates that the timeline is firm. We are building, we are building in early 2007, and at that time we discussed the concerns for this site. And um, given the two, two sites, if, if those are the only two sites on the table, 23rd Street is a better site. Thank you. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, each of you on, on your desk this evening uh, have a copy of a resolution that was drafted at Building Use Committee when they met last Thursday evening. Um, and this was put together after um, a fairly lengthy discussion uh, with building use. And it states some, some figures uh, regarding what, what we thought was a proposal um, or what we thought could be a proposal um, to the county. And it basically comes down to a net amount of $504,866 for the 23rd Street location. That being said, it was also requested that um, uh, Adam Payne would be here tonight to answer any questions that, that, that may be um, um, stated, but uh, he had another scheduling uh, conflict for this evening and uh, therefore is there. Uh, but he did say that uh, if any of the older persons or even citizens have a question and would like to contact um, him directly, uh, that would be fine. Uh, his number is, um, uh, you can obtain that by calling 3103, I, I believe, or 459-3103 is, is his office number. Um, and then finally he said that um, in his email to me was that um, uh, Chairman uh, Gehring as well as uh, himself and, and the mayor and police chief had met and did state that North 23rd, and they did straight state that North 23rd Street site land was still available and that the county board chairman is open to uh, the county board receiving an offer from the common council. And um, that was uh, the midst of the discussion and, and that was one of the reasons why this, this resolution was drafted. This resolution could not be sent directly to the committee of the whole, it has to go to council and it's going to council on Monday night. So this document will be before you on Monday night. Part of the, um, part of the discussion was, well, can the committee of the whole also do a, a resolution if they so chose to do? And I think they can as long as it would um, uh, look at least something like this to make the city an offer, or excuse me, to make the county an offer. We, we've got a short period of time if we're going to do this because the county board only meets once a month. Their next meeting, I believe, is like the 21st of, um, of June and then they would not meet again until July, um, whatever the third Tuesday is, unless a special meeting were called and I don't know if, if the county board does that. But um, those are um, some of the reasons why the Building Use Committee submitted this to council and like I said, it would be um, on the agenda for a Monday meeting uh, the 19th of June. Thank you. Alderman Davis. Uh, thank you, Chair, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what did this council miss when we, had our, when we had our meeting and when we picked the city hall site? Now several months later, we're, we're backing up and we had a pretty, pretty large majority vote there to pick City Hall. There's nothing has changed. Nothing has changed since then. You want to, you want to give a site, you want to give a parking lot away for $122,000 in this year property. What's the value of that property? I think it's considerably more than that. You know, we made a responsible decision here. Uh, I work in a rather large division, a core company. And I was accosted a couple of times uh, within the last several days. You know, what are you people doing? Can't you make a decision and, and stick by it? You know, we back up on everything in here. You know, we get new council members in here uh, from the election, and now we're backing up on a decision for the city hall. We can put a good PD next door here, and we can get it within budget. You know, it's just a matter of what we want to pay for in that building. It won't be that big a a footprint there or a square footage if we want to get it within the, the budget that we want to pay for here. And it's time to, it's, it's time to make a decision here. 
I'm not for this. We made a, we made a responsible decision. And we'll get a PD built there for the budget that we want and at a less cost to the taxpayer. It's just that we're paid and we're elected to be up here and make decisions. We made one, and it was a good one, and I stand by it. Thank you. Alderman Serta. I don't know. OK, this is on. I just wanted to address um, Alderman Davis that I had made a promise when you had take that, took in that last and final vote that I would not revisit the issue, that I would support my teammates, and that I would move forward. But I am only speaking on this issue now and giving my two cents concerning 23rd because it is before me. So for that, I apologize. I did respect your decision. Um, if anything, I got to thank Mr. Sabanash because over and over again, I'm reminded of the movie Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. And he has re reiterated to us that he will not choose our site for us. He will provide us with the information, give us um, any type of concerns that we might um, run into. But he has kept his integrity that way, that we are the ones that will be making this decision. Um, I am somewhat concerned that I have received this resolution just this evening and haven't even had a chance to read through it thoroughly, but yet I'm expected um, because of the timeline to the county that I have to make a decision tonight. I have some, okay, and then maybe you could clarify Alderman Groff if I misinterpreted that. Um, I do have some concerns about, um, and it was, it was discussed earlier tonight too regarding the numbers. What has changed, Alderman Davis had said. When I had heard that the 23rd Street site had come back on the table, um, I view it as the lesser of two evils. If anything, um, it really validated me concerning my vote that I had gave concerning City Hall. I did not support it. I've always said that I felt that it was like pouring new wine into old wineskins. This, this building itself is bursting from the seams. Um, and I felt that it would be a long-term headache for many years to come if we built it here. So in that respect, thank you for validating my vote. Um, however, what has changed? I was surprised and, and initially somewhat excited to think that maybe the deal had gotten better to take a look at this again. Um, but when you look at the numbers, given the history, and I have some um, documentation here which was provided from the county, where do we come from from the old deal? February 13, 2004. This is the notes from the county. New proposal received from City Attorney Steve McLean. The city has requested independent appraisals completed on the two properties. The four acre county, county parcel was appraised at 629,000 and the sitting parking lot was appraised at 326,000. The offer, 629,000 discounted by one third, which reduced it by 209,646, which bring it to 419,354. Discount the city parking lot value at minus 326,000. Leaves a balance due of 93,354. In addition, the city will provide $100,000 towards the cost of constructing a new salt shed. In summary, swap the city parking lot and pay $193,354 for a four acre county parcel. Here's the change. That's how much it was just less than a year ago. We were gonna pay the county, giving them a parking lot, $193,354. Here we are, less than a year, and what's being discussed is paying them roughly around, now, 500,000 and a parking lot. To clarify some of the questions that have been made about this parking lot, where are all these numbers coming? Back in October of 2003, the assessment value on the parking lot was 127,500. Today, now the assessment read in the paper is 122,400. Where are these numbers of a million dollars coming? These, mon these numbers of 498,000, well, I'll tell you. Through the period of 1989 to the late 90s, we um, continue to acquire um, those parcels there. With the acquisition cost and the lot construction cost and the demolition, we as the city paid over $498,863.79. Now, the million dollar factor. If the county, if we do give up that parking lot, we lose full control of that. They could in turn sell that to a private developer and what would that value be today? That's where that million dollars is coming in. Mind you, 
we receive revenue from the parking that we provide there that people rent out, which we would be losing as well. Um, given all these things, um, here's the advantages of open government. Here we're discussing this. At times we need to be business minded. I was hoping to come here tonight where we would be thinking of the city's best interest and going back to the county what best serves our needs. I am um, somewhat frustrated in the fact that I am limited to tell you more information tonight concerning what the agenda says, but I will tell you this. There is a better deal out there or comparable, but I am prevented from telling you. But trust this, that I will be bringing in a resolution for our next Common Council. I'll give you the analogy of buying a home. I think it's been determined here that comparing, comparing City Hall to 23rd Street site is not comparing apples to apples. But I have something that will be coming in on our next council meeting that we can take an earnest look. What is two weeks? It's not gonna compromise the timeline. And again, using the analogy of a home, in order to know that you're getting the best deal, always the first person to present its case seems right until another one comes along and questions it. And that's all I'm asking this council, is to take a look at some more information that I have. That way we can give a fair assessment um, but I do not feel comfortable in supporting this this evening. I will allow the city two more weeks to make sure that it gets the best deal. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Montemayor. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think um, the fact that we're looking at, at the best site again is wonderful. The present site is number two. It has been with the studies. However, that we're considering the best one again, I think is great. Now, as part of the Building Use Committee, I helped put together this resolution, along with Rich Kephart's help. Thank you. But I think maybe, after thinking about this a little further, um, the new assessment of the value of 23rd Street, new assessment, June 2006, is $949,900. That's a new assessment. It's gone up since um, we talked with the with the county and with the last with the county in May of '04. It's now June of '06, and the new assessment is fair. And then we deduct a third because we, as a city, already have it's part of us. So that brings it down to six hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. Now the new assessment on that parking lot is one hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars. And Marie Ellis certainly knows what she's doing. However, however, previously the county agreed that they would allow $326,000 in the value of that parking lot. So I hope either this evening or Monday to change the value of the parking lot to what the county offered us before, the $326,000 which would mean instead of offering the county $504,000, it would be $301,000, which is pretty much what the county said to us in May 04 when we had the previous agreement with them. It's fair to the county that we take into consideration the new value of 23rd. It's fair to us <coughs> to take into consideration the value they gave to that parking lot and I would hope the county would say yes to this. And it'll be a straightforward, if this is approved, we purchase the land, it's ours, the salt, they can take the salt shed off, that's theirs, move it, put whatever they want. We have the land, it's ours, and we can move ahead and build on the best site instead of the second best site. But remember, the second best site is still pretty darn good. And also, not mess with the timeline, get this police station built. Now there's this chatter about the parking lot. Um, lots of info. Uh, in 90, uh, when we purchased it in 97, the assessment was $197,000. We paid 317, that was, that's over and done with. Then we took down the houses, the value went down. Um, nobody has come to the city that I know of asking to purchase it at any price whatsoever at all. We've put in money to maintain the parking lot. We, we help, we keep it clean. So far, the total income of all these years we've had the parking lot 
is $53,000. So I think that the county needs it. I think it's a good deal for us to have them take that. And let's see if um, we can move forward with this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alderman McGrath, did you have a point of order? Or? Yes. Uh, number one, we don't have a document here. Number two, um, tonight's discussion is only supposed to be uh, regarding the alternate site. If we want to do um, a resolution from this committee, we can, but it's not necessary to do it. But this document that you all have a copy of is what's coming from building use to the next council meeting. And that's all that, the only reason this was brought in. And I just put the timeline out as to when the county board had their meetings, just to let you know that there's one coming up on the 21st and there'll be another one in July. And I don't know if, if that's the group that's, that's bargaining or not, but what building use did was say, okay, if we're looking at, at the 23rd Street site, if, if the police chief and the mayor both want to consider that one more time, I, it shouldn't be any bother to any of us except it's going to cause us to write a document and say, okay, this is our one-time offer. Either take it or leave it. If they say no, we're back to the north side of, of this building and we'll build a police station there as far as I'm concerned. Thank and you. I think that was the, the feeling of the, the, the building use committee that, okay, well, we'll give it one last ditch effort and uh, whatever the council thinks should be done. If the council votes no, don't even give them this offer, then it's dead in the water there. But you'll have that option to do either um, Monday the 19th or the first meeting in July. It's up to you. All right, thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, number one, I do agree with both our mayor and our chief of police that we must keep the timeline on this project. If we deviate from the timeline, uh, the, the chances of this pro project being completed diminish greatly. Uh, however, it appears to me that we're basically looking at two types of construction. We have multi-story construction or slab on grade construction. Um, to bring North 23rd Street back into this is the only alternative does not make a lot of sense to me. I was not on the council when this decision was made of as far as what the two best sites were. However, staying within the timeline, studying both multi-story construction and slab on grade construction, we could fairly explore other sites and stay within the timeline and get the project done. We're not allowed to discuss other sites tonight. However, uh, I do believe that there is a great alternative out there that we should seriously be looking at. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. Uh, just a, a couple points of clarification here. This uh, parking lot on Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, older person, sir, did you say it had been appraised at one time at 326? I wrote down that you said it had been appraised mm -hmm. at 326. Oh, let's see. Because I've heard appraisals 127, 122. Was that, was that an offer? Okay. Um, to address your question, I have here from the county um, documentation, which they provided, discount the city parking lot value, which they put a value on, 326000 okay, so the, the appraisal value I have back in October of 2003 was 127500 Thanks. Alderman Ryan. <coughs> One thing I, I'm not clear on on the North 23rd site, I don't know this for a fact, but it's my understanding that there's a good potential of uh, contamination of the property. Has there been a phase one and phase two environmental study done on this property? And if there is contamination, will that contamination slow down the construction of the department, do we have DNR approval to build, to do a, a cap on it? Um, who's responsible if we have to clean up the contamination on that property? Is that 
the county's responsibility or the city taxpayer's responsibility? I believe as far as responsibility, we'd have to work that out. And I know we did a phase one, Chief Kirk, uh, are, are you aware if we did a phase two? Or uh, Tom Holton? There was a phase one that I believe, but then we went out and dug four test holes out there. There is fill there. We found this, there's mainly all this dirt in there. We found a few chunks of concrete and brick and asphalt, but nothing that we could say was contaminated with smell and odor or anything like that. By, by, back by the salt, the salt shed, where I think there is some petroleum impact, so back there, I believe. I can't say that, I'm certainly pretty sure there was. Thank you. Uh, I, th I think it should be clarified before anything uh, is agreed upon if there is environmental contamination, who is responsible, because that could be a phenomenal uh, bill to the taxpayers, and at the same time has the potential to uh, seriously delay the timeline of the building of this facility. Thank you. The most important thing that we need to do is build a police station. We cannot go away from this timeline. And, and looking at other sites, you know, we just have to make sure we don't go away from the timeline, like what has been said tonight. Is there any other comments? Attorney McLean, if you could come to the podium. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my, my comment is just, uh, I'm not here to speak one way or the other on any particular site, but uh, looking at the numbers on the 23rd Street site, I was involved in the negotiation process with the county, spent about a year on that process. Uh, we got to the point where uh, the county got ahead of us. They took a, a vote, the county board voted to sell it to us for a fixed number. Uh, that's $200,000 less than I see in the, in the draft resolution. And I guess that causes me some concern as to you know, why the difference, if the county was willing to accept a lesser number uh, a year and a half ago, uh, what's, what's changed? Uh, I would address Alderman Hannah's question. The $326,000 figure for the parking lot at the time was an appraisal done by Tellen and Associates uh, 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 the city council authorized an appraisal of the parking lot and also the 23rd Street site. If you look at the, uh, the draft resolution on the, uh, the assessor's figures for the 23rd Street site, you see that the assessor doesn't assess tax-exempt properties. Um, what, she, what the numbers there relate to are a property that's adjacent at six, roughly $6 a square foot. It's not that particular property. That was part of the reason why the council a year and a half ago decided to do appraisals for, for the city as to what the values were. And uh, while there was some mention about 600 and some odd thousand on the appraisal that was done on the 23rd Street site, uh, my recollection is there was some confusion on that that the appraiser didn't include in the uh, the additional uh, easement area, the 0.6 acre or 0.4 acre parcel. So that we, in the negotiations, factored the value up a little bit, and that's how uh, it came. You know, the bottom line was 162,750 uh, for the parcel. Um, 137 five for the salt shed if if the county was going to rebuild the salt shed within two years and if they didn't rebuild it within two years they would reimburse us that money and uh, we would deed them the uh, the parking lot site um, uh, maybe uh, there has that was uh, should say my notes reflect that we asked the county about their proposal about a year ago, and they responded back in a correspondence in July of 05 saying those numbers are still good, that's still the county's position, they would sell it to us under those terms and conditions. It would seem to me the, 
and, and I must apologize, I haven't had any contact with Adam Payne or Bill Gehring currently, so maybe, maybe those aren't, maybe it's not legitimate to say that that's what we ought to work off of currently, but it would seem like based on uh, that pretty long-term negotiation that that should be kind of the framework that we would use if we're gonna acquire the 23rd Street site rather than sort of start from scratch uh, using uh, the assessors, you know, assess values, which um, I don't know. Uh, the assessments are looking at property in a, from a different perspective than an actual appraisal is as far as market values and so forth. And I think the appraiser on the, uh, on the parking lot site in particular was looking at the improvements and things like that, the, what went into the parking lot, as opposed to just looking at it as a vacant piece of land. So those are, those are my comments. As I say, um, whatever site you choose you know, has no bearing on me. I, I do think the time is of the essence, um, but I would suggest that if you're gonna use or look at acquiring the 23rd Street site or making an offer back to the county, that you kind of work from what the county has already agreed to, basically, and if there's some inflation factor to be factored into that, uh, so be it, but um, I think Alderman Montemeyer had brought it up previously. She had originally talked about the $122,000 figure and would rather use the $326,000 figure. I think that really ends up at the same point that I would be suggesting. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney McQueen. Is there any, uh, President Berg? Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we're spending a lot of time on, on the parking lot, and I don't think anybody who's ever driven past the courthouse could argue uh, that uh, there is excess parking in the general courthouse area. Uh, this came up uh, in 2005 when the uh, individual who's involved in the courthouse maintenance, Mr. DeBeast, wrote Adam Payne a memo. The option, if uh, the parking lot is not available, is for the county to look at structured parking. That was originally considered in 1999 as part of their long-term capital outlay. Uh, his estimates are for structured parking with a 2006 inflated cost. It's estimated that to put a parking ramp in would cost in 2006 dollars about $3.75 million. If that were the case, that would mean the city share would likely be something like a million and a quarter uh, to provide that structure uh, in the county parking lot. So that is also a factor that needs to be considered. So when we juxtapose the uh, cost to the taxpayer of say a million and a quarter of dollars, and that doesn't include the bonding cost because likely this isn't going to come out of pocket, uh, versus the cost of a parking lot which where maybe we can negotiate to some degree having the first right of refusal for the value of the property, I think we may be able to uh, negotiate further with the county given that their alternative is really rather expensive. That's the alternative of structured parking. Thank you. Any other aldermen have any comments? Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I just want to go back to stating, back to City Hall, the reason uh, that I chose City Hall in the first place. I know we've talked, and I just want to remind people and, and my constituents also that um, back then, there was, we talked about the land acquisition, and here at City Hall, there were zero dollars for the land acquisition. We, we've got it right here. Um, and I know it was in the paper that, the, that our architect had said that um, he, he recommended City Hall even over the Vandervart site. Um, it, there are things here at City Hall that would work very nicely. I had also gotten letters and, and calls from constituents who said, Gene, we'd like it at City Hall. And we just, thinking back on that, they, they did say that. Um, and then there was also a study done here by uh, Tom Holton and Paulette Enders, and um, they came out with City Hall as being the top site. So, I, you know, I just wanted to remind people to go back and, and look at some of that information also um, before we, you know, do make a final decision. Thanks. Thank you.
Alderman Ryan. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think one thing that we're, uh, we, we haven't, that we're not paying attention to between the City Hall site and the North 23rd site or an alternative uh, 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 slab on grade type construction is uh, what are the wishes of the police department and how can they operate the best? How can they be the most efficient in their operations? I don't know if any, if the studies took into account um, what is the best alternative for operations of the police department as opposed to what is the most economical or the, uh, uh, or the recommendation of people who are not going to be working out of this facility. I think that should be taken into account. I think uh, both uh, the mayor uh, and uh, Chief Kirk um, feel that the North 23rd Street site is a better site. Um, I, I've spoken with the chief about it. He stated that it would work uh, uh, functionally much better than trying to uh, work out of City Hall here. Uh, so I, I, I do believe that uh, the uh, North 23rd site or an alternative slab on grade type construction is probably the way to go, seeing as the, uh, you know, the police department are going to be the people working out of it. Thank you. Thank you. No other discussion? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Triple tie, motion passes.